Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Kia Tatiana here and today I'm going to be speaking straight out of Ecclesiastes 2. I'm going to jump right into it for this message and let's get into it. So I'm going to be reading Ecclesiastes 2 verse 1 to 11 in the NIV version and it reads, I said to myself, come now, I will test you with pleasure to find out what is good. But that also proved to be meaningless. Laughter, I said, is madness. And what does pleasure accomplish? I tried cheering myself with wine and embracing folly, my mind still guiding me with wisdom. I wanted to see what was good for people to do under the heavens during the few days of their lives. I undertook great projects. I built houses for myself and planted vineyards. I made gardens and parks and planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made reservoirs to water groves of flourishing trees. I bought male and female slaves and had other slaves who were born in my house. I also owned more herds and flocks than anyone in Jerusalem before me. I amassed silver and gold for myself and the treasure of kings and provinces. I acquired male and female singers and harems as well, the delights of a man's heart. I became greater by far than anyone in Jerusalem before me. In all this, my wisdom stayed with me. I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all my labor, and this was a reward for all my toil. Yet when I surveyed all that my hands had done and had what I and and what I had to toil to achieve Everything was meaningless. Chasing after the wind, nothing was gained under the sun. So this was powerful, it was long, um, but it spoke a lot, it said a lot. I feel like this whole thing was kind of like self-explanatory in a way. Um, but I wanna get into like what this actual set of scriptures meant and the revelations that I received and the things that um, I learned from reading this. I read Ecclesiastes 2 before, but this time I got like a whole new understanding um, from it so if you're wondering who's a writer of this um, chapter or yeah this chapter the, his name is Koleth I don't want to keep saying Koleth because I feel like I'm gonna get it tongue twisted so I'm gonna just call him Q um, and as you can see throughout the writing Q was listing out the things he tries to find pleasure in and you could kind of relate it to the things that we as humans try to find pleasure in whether it's our jobs businesses uh, people relationships church like whatever the case may be there's different things that we try to find pleasure in um but it doesn't give um permanent joy essentially so what he was trying to do was try to fill voice things like i just said listed like the drugs alcohol partying people relationships and all that he was trying to fill those voids um in a different kind of way but if we were relating it to ourselves these are the things that we would probably be filling ourselves um, with so one thing that Q wanted to know is if pleasure was worth pursuing there's an activity that would bring meaning into one's life so he says in Ecclesiastes 2 verse 3 he's trying to find out what's good for people to do with their lives under the Sun so in Ecclesiastes 2 verse 4 to 8 um, Q listed out the different things he tried to find pleasure in so what he said was he made great works, he built houses, he had vineyards, he had gardens, he had orchards, he had trees and pools to water those trees, he had servants, he bought servants at that. He had servants born in his house, he had more cattle than anything before him who were over in Jerusalem. He had the entertainment, he had the money, he had the woman, he had all these things. Um, but one thing you can notice from this set of things that Q was listing out was his usage of I. He said, I made me, I planted me, I built me. It's all for him. The focus was all on him the entire time. So when this is all summed up, um, you can see that in Ecclesiastes 2 verse 9, you can see that he gained all this wealth. He gained all this riches. He had the woman. He had the things that he thought would fulfill him. He thought that would bring him um, eternal pleasure. He thought these things um but one thing that he said that he wanted his wisdom to remain with him and he didn't want to be sidetracked 
um, by making the focus not on him. However, he was still on an active pursuit to still find meaning in this life apart from God. Closing out from Ecclesiastes um, 2 verse 10, he, it says that Q didn't hold anything from his eyes. He, whatever his eyes desired, whatever his heart desired, essentially, he went after it, right? So anything he wanted, he took and he did it. But one thing is that he had the temporary um, answer, the temporary fix that he wanted. Um, what was that he wanted? He wanted joy, right? He wanted his heart to be rejoiced. He wanted to feel like I did something like how sometimes when we, our goals, like the hustle and grinding, like get rich quick schemes and all that, these are all temporary because one, you can't take the money with you. Um, and one thing that I had related it to that's not a part of my notes, but one thing I just remembered was um, say if Q, well, he did all these things. He built the houses, the vineyards, the gardens and all that. What if a, a natural disaster was to happen and all that was wiped away? Then what would he have? He put his trust and he put his happiness, his joy into things that can fade away. And that's something that we constantly do as well as humans and stuff that we have to actually remember. We can't put our hope and our trust in things that are going to pass away. You can't take the money with you. You can't take the job with you. You can't take the lifestyle, the happiness and all that. And it goes on in like the end of chapter two it even speaks about um at the end of time when he passes away he's still somebody else is still going to take this position somebody's still going to take the things that you earn so even though you made a legacy or made like a empire or whatever the case may be if you're not submitting that back to the lord if you're not recognizing that this is god's own whether you want to believe in god or not when it's time to go can you take these things with you? You cannot. So at the end of all this, he would not have anything. Um, it's, it's something where are you going to run back to the things that gave you temporary fulfillment? Or would you just um, go to the person that can give you permanent fulfillment? So it was no ultimate fulfillment, no ultimate joy, no ultimate meaning. Um, it's just like the sun. It rises and sets. It does the same thing every single day Just like the ocean that keeps receiving water, but never never fills up these these are things that we cannot have when we pass away so I wanted to read from 24 to 26 in chapter 2 and it says there is nothing better for a man that he should eat and drink and make his soul enjoy good in his labor this also I saw that it is from the hand of God for who can eat or who can have enjoyment more than I? For the man that please him, God give him wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he give travail to gather and to heap up that he may give to him that please God. This also is vanity and a striving after wind. So to sum it all up, um, Q started off as a quest to find temporary joy and fulfillment in these things that he built. First considered whether human wisdom provide that meaning and fulfillment, but it didn't. Then he turned to pleasure and wealth to see that, see if that was satisfied, and it didn't. He went on to find the pleasure and wealth and the things that he did, the gardens, the buildings, um, the orchards, and all that. Um, but then also we saw that he was confronted in verse 12 to 17 with reality that all the work he did, ultimately, even if it lasts forever, he would still have to pass it down to someone else. Ultimately, when we work for work's sake, work without an eye on God, that means basically working to please yourself is meaningless. And it's no way that we're going to be able to find true fulfillment and joy in the things that we've accomplished on earth. Because one, if it was never submitted back to God, if this was never something that was God ordained, if this was never something God got the glory out of, it was an idol, something that we made for ourselves so we can have the money, so we can have the generational wealth, and we can have the legacy, the empire is all about ourselves, and that becomes selfish, and that's where idols are being built. In chapter 2, it closes with the key to fulfillment, and the key to fulfillment is joy in God. God gives us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, happiness, all these type of things that we try to find in things of this world, God gives it to us. Everything apart from God is worthless, is empty, there's no way you can find meaning in your life, anything like that so I want to leave you all with a question are you looking for meaning and fulfillment in your job in your money 
in the business you created in that relationship you in um how much things you've accomplished in your life what celebrities you worked with are you finding joy and fulfillment in these things or are you going to set your eyes on jesus the one who can give us true fulfillment joy peace and eternal life i hope this encouraged you and i do pray that you read ecclesiastes 2 for yourself and i thank you guys for watching this video and i'll see you in my next one bye